is. Look how cute it is. So adorable. Ah, so cute. For your fantasies of cuddling Phile and Rosetta and being the only uh, space probe plush in existence. Um, and I've searched. Um, this thing is awesome. You can see the um, ESA logo on here. and Just look at him. Look at him. Look at him adorable little face. You are cuddling so much. He's so cute. I just love him. <laughs> And um, it's made of a uh, velvety kind of material. I don't know exactly what it's called, but it's very, very velvety. Um, it has uh, some sort of plastic support structure on the inside. So she's not exactly soft. And you feel as if you're going to crush her. Because I'm too scared to hug her more than... Like, like properly. You have to do it in this weird cubic way. Mm. Orthogonal hugs. Mm. Has been my armor on her? <laughs> she has little adorable hands. Uh, this is basically her. Um, don't have anything for scale. Um, the closest thing I have that I know the exact length of it's a, a little tiny bit over four centimeters. And so, if so you're interested in buying any of these, or like if you want the STL, I can give it to you. I'm modifying it so it's not doesn't break. It's a that you can with this too. Look <laughs> at Cute. If you haven't seen the ESA videos, you have to see them. It's a little bit late now, but the Philly project is still going on, and he's still so cute and cuddly and so adorable. Also, I'm not actually still in my room. This is my room right now, but I'm just uh, coming back for a couple of days home to... Um, pick up stuff, including this, and all that giant shower curtain to cover everything. I think I thought my mom ordered one of the, um, I have a picture of the small Magellanic cloud, the wing, taking the wing with the small Magellanic cloud picture, but I guess she didn't, but yeah, I'm just here for a couple of days to pick up that and clean up my room and whatnot so that, uh, well, not clean up, but like put everything in that giant bin over there so that uh, I can. They, my parents won't raid my room. You're so cute. I love her. She's so cute and so sweet and feels so good on your face. And, and, and she can give you, well, she can't really hug you with her arms, her tiny little arms. She can hug you with her solar panels. Solar panel hug. Uh, I just want to plush up the International Space Station. Not good enough. Not cuddly. Like, this is not cuddly. Thinking of making a thing. A thing. Like, I'll make pl pl like plushies. And it'll be. And, and like, it'll sell. Painted, painted 3D printed models that hopefully I will actually get to move, make a move and whatnot, and a little pendants like what I had over there that's a bit more durable and whatnot, and I'll sell them, and I'll call my little store his spacecrafts. See what I did there? See what I did there? But yeah, if you want one of the, I got mine for twenty four ninety five years. This. Four ninety five shipping and handling. And I ordered it on like the thirtieth, thirty four, whatever. It's the last day of June, July, and uh, which is the last day to pre order. 
and they, it shipped on August 6th, and sometime recently, just a couple of days ago, so probably the 28th or 29th, not probably even later than that, probably the 30th, um, 29th, 30th, that, um, I actually got this, so about a month. But look at him, he's so cute, look at Rosetta, she's so cute. Look at his face, look at it, look at it, lick, 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 so cute. Ah, you're so cute. <laughs> but, yeah, if you order these, go to the rosettashop.eu and you can buy all sorts of things related to, um, the PLA mission. But, <laughs> I need all sorts of space probe stuff, because I love space probes so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, you should get them with these. Now they're 29.95 euros, which I'm not going to give a number for because the price of the euro, the euro true USD conversion rate, has been fluctuating a lot. I'm not sure if that's because of uh, the the US dollar fluctuating or because of the euro fluctuating. Probably the euro thing because of what's going on in Greece and whatnot. But yeah. <laughs> So cute. I just can't help cuddling it. <laughs> I've been, I've been like in love with the feeling mission since I heard of it just a couple, like a week before I landed. But I can finally say that the first space probe that I can follow from this, from its suggestion, like when it's like, okay, we're going to do this onwards. And before that, for six years, I've been wanting it was um, the Europa mission. And the Enceladus mission, which just which just got launched, launched, pun not intended, which just got um, suggested very recently, like a couple of days back, maybe most of a week back. But yeah, you, you have these missions, <laughs> and ever since I was like twelve, I've been thinking, oh, we need a probe there. We need a probe to um, Enceladus. We need a probe to Titan. We need a probe to Europa. But um, you're saying the Europe, both the Europa one and the Enceladus one, is going to be more of an orbiter slash um, clipper thing. So the Europa clipper is what it sounds like and stuff. But the Enceladus one, they're thinking of sending one to and go to go analyze the specific composition of the. Um, of the jets. So the Cassini probe was able to say that yes, there is organic compounds in this, but Enceladus is basically vomiting free samples of amino acids and whatnot in the composition. So we could pretty much um, analyze the... we can pretty definitively... I don't think definitively, but we can very you can detect whether there's life on Enceladus with the plumes of um of that. Which makes me think of a potential rule thirty four between whatever the the Enceladus probe will be and so Enceladus. Never mind that I said that. <laughs> um but yeah, then there's the Mars 2020 mission, and it's going to be obviously in 2020, and all of these probes are just, it's exciting to see this come about. But yeah, I didn't get the chance to uh, really follow Philae's thing, because when he was launched, I was nine, and I, I liked space back then, but first of all, I was in Australia. No, 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 I was in Australia. So, just, I said nine. No, I was seven. What the hell am I talking about? I was seven when that launched. So, I liked space back then, but didn't know too much about space as far as space probes go. Um, don't know how long I've known the, about the ISS for. Known about the ISS for a really long time. 
but I don't remember where I learned about it first. But you know, living in Florida, I probably went. I like. I've only stolen things twice in my life. One was uh, when I was eleven, I stole some candy, my friend, like a dollar's worth of seriously overpriced candy from Universal. But uh, when I my, when I was two years old, first thing I ever stole was a little magnet that with NASA's emblem on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'm destined for space. Um, but yeah, I I went to the space center when I was really young. And now and then I still go. But it's not another question that I learned about the space station from there when I was really young, and that just kind of stuck in my head. What not? Kind of like how, you know, I don't remember when I learned about the lunar module and all the things just generic. But yeah, space is just awesome. And uh, so, like, I guess when 2004 and afterwards, you don't really, and this that too, it's an ESA mission, so you don't really get that much coverage with NASA on this. Um, and to be fair, I didn't know, I didn't know what New Horizons was just on a similar time for launch and whatnot. But, yeah, New Horizons, that was an exciting one. I love the pictures. Like, it was during, the pictures were being released when I was at preview of session for, for, for UF. And I was so upset because my phone wasn't working, so I could not actually check the, could not actually check the, um, Pluto pictures as they were, they're coming. And, uh, so I was carrying around my laptop trying to get the feed and stuff. By the day, the, 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 the feed of the actual thing, I didn't get to do that. But I got a little bit, like they were releasing it. But I got to the, my previous staff where he put up the picture of Pluto and I walked in and was like, Pluto! Yeah! And then, so he, he calls me Pluto now. I'd go say hi to him one of these days take one of his courses spring spring maybe but yeah I'm not liking being back in my room to be honest I've gotten so used to my dorm and I don't like that being in my room <laughs> my room is boring at least in my dorm whenever I want whenever I'm bored with my dorm I can just you know, easily walk out and go explore the campus and see what's going on. Here? Nothing. Nothing I can. Nothing's going on outside. So maybe I'll no, see 8 or 3 a.m. It's time to sleep. I'll do 8 or 3 a.m. because I stay up and try through it the entire night. Ugh. Have to um, stay up all throughout today, I guess, because I, have to, I really need to normalize my sleeping pattern and. Yeah. Today's the 5th and tomorrow's the 6th. Tomorrow I get to join the freaking CubeSat Club! I get to join a club where I get to go CubeSats. The small satellite design club is just so exciting. It's like, I didn't even think. I did not. I could not believe it. It's like when I first heard that there was going to be a Kids Club, like this person was telling me, I was sitting, so I'm sitting in the library waiting for something to get the 3D printed. Like it's another ISS thing that they converted a, the um, simplified version of the ISS on the NASA site into an SDL file. And it's, you know, it's not exactly how it works properly. And then it's really sent it apart. And I could not take it out of the rafters. And it's all fragile. And well, it didn't work. <laughs> you know. But. So yeah, I uh So then I was in there and then I look up and then I notice somebody somebody has the NASA emblem on it. And then I see another thing on it and I look closer and then I see that he has another sticker he, he, on his laptop and I see he has a sticker of that the ISS and I'm like I like your stickers. And then so I started talking to him for a while and apparently he's the um president of um the Aero Gators Club and whatnot, and he started telling me about. I said, "Oh, I'm going to join the the um, 
I am a sister in space, and I'm going to join the um, AAS, which is the the American Astronomical Society of the UF and all. And so I'm going to join that, the AIA, AIAA, um, the American Institution of Astronautics and Aeronautics or whatever. Um, obviously, I'm the astronautics part. Um, SWE, which is the Society of Women, for Women Engineers, SSDC. So he mentioned the SSDC. And I was like, what's that? And he said, Small Satellite Design Club. And I immediately just got a smile on my face, like, please explain. And he told me, he what CubeSats? I think they get to build CubeSats. And I just, like, oh my god, I just was squeeing. It's like, ah, CubeSats. And so, <laughs> oh my god. And it was like, I honestly couldn't believe it, because I, I was just, I've been kind of fantasizing, almost, about, like literally fantasizing about UF having a CubeSat club and me in the program, like working on CubeSats and whatnot, because, I mean, like, that's the closest I'm ever going to get at this current stage to working on anything remotely satellite-like and, and doing anything related to the space station, because these things do get go up to the space station and get deployed from the space station. And it's closest I'm ever going to interact with it, because by the time I um, graduate and get my degree and whatnot, the program's probably going to be uh, discontinued, and it's probably going to deorbit. <laughs> Last night I dreamed of the station deorbiting, and I went off. I remember, like, it was like coming like this, for some reason really slowly, and then crashed and then I ran to it and started just just touching a soda but it's like space station space station and there you go yeah so but so this the group apparently you can build your own little tiny satellites and do various like you can make them do different things and that'll be the satellite is not really a satellite satellite, but then they're working with the rocket club, and then they, they'll launch the rockets up really high into the atmosphere and then deposit those things, and those things will do whatever it needs to do. What I'm curious is that I want to, like, personally, if I knew how to, what I would do is that I would, if I, I would try and, like, I want to understand the behavior of a plasma, like an electrical arc plasma in a vacuum, uh, um, in in microgravity, so while well, this wouldn't necessarily have to be done on the space station, you could easily do that by having a little vacuum chamber on, and um, well, not so. I mean, the vomit comet is a little expensive to get a ticket for five thousand dollars, and so you can do sci the science and uh, and watch the thing behave the way it behaves. And so you could have one chamber where it does where you can just see it in normal gravity and one in a vacuum. Um I'm not exactly sure I didn't find out how electrical arcs behave in that in vacuum. But um I think that electrical arcs still work in in vacuums. In a vacuum. Well, I'm not hundred percent sure. As dielectrics and whatnot. But yeah. Probably gonna do another vlog when I get back to my dorm and start gushing about space again. But yeah. <laughs> so, got all sorts of space things going on. Well, yeah, like, I don't know what, what their CubeSat is specifically doing at this point. Um, what, because they, they, they said that, um, they got all the, um, they got the design, like, they got the design done, they got the, um, coding done, and everything, and now this semester and stuff, they're going to actually start building it. Guess who has a background in electrical? Obviously, if you've been subscribed to me since, uh, whenever I made this channel a long time ago. <laughs> Obviously, I have done electrical stuff. I have gotten a lot better. I haven't uploaded anything related to it, but I have gotten a lot better at it. 
even though I haven't touched anything, learned the theory behind it, know how to solder properly, and I know how to build circuits, and stuff like that. But, yeah. <laughs> It's so cool. Like I mean, like sure, I'm not an aerospace engineer or electrical engineer as far as my major goes, but I do have the mathematics background, and as far as my major goes, and I clearly, clearly know what I'm doing as far as um, I know. I probably know ten to twenty to. Maybe sometimes even a hundred times more than the incoming for at least the incoming freshmen about like satellite design and whatnot. Because I've talked to some of the the people, they don't know much about it. They're like, they'll know, they'll know, they'll they'll have heard of a satellite, but they don't know how exactly it works. But I'm, I've read so much about the the things and for for my current state of being like me being a freshman in college right now as far as when I made this video I know a fair amount about space and and space technology and I just I'm trying to read up on on space. Like, like I'm trying to read this. It's very outdated. Like, 2008. Seriously, library. Get newer books. This is eight years old, almost. Seriously. New books, please, on the International Space Station. Then, there was a 2002 version, too. This does show, the, like, what it looked like when it's finished. Which it is more or less finished now. They just, you know, are attaching new modules, to, like, new, um, bits to it every now and then. Like, the telescope, the, the Dark Matter Telescope or something, they recently... Like, as in, like, ooh, like with the HTV launch. <laughs> and up there, and then, oh, yeah, the new, the new crew with the, um, Soyuz, and, like, delivering the, uh, uh three. With, uh, space. <laughs> and just... I, you know, you know, that's why I've changed my username from Underbot Set to International Space Station because I'm just so obsessed with the space station. <laughs> I'm so obsessed with it. Really, really obsessed with it. <laughs> you don't want to know how obsessed with the space station I am. Um, yeah, you're right. I'm obsessed with you too, Philae. Not as much as I was before, but I just don't. And, like, there isn't that much going on in math news for me to get, like, super excited over it every day. I don't know. I can't even give you a time frame of things that happen in math because things don't happen in math too often to get excited over it every single thing. You, you get new space news almost every single day. But math news? The most recent math news I heard? Something about them, them finding a new Pentagon tessellation. And it's like, okay, that's cool, but is that really something you get super excited over? It's interesting, yeah, it's interesting, but any more than interesting? Not really. Not, not just, not like a tessellation of a, I mean, like if somebody solved the Millennium Prize problem, then I'm like, oh my god, yeah, Millennium Prize problem. 
That'd be that's the equivalent of someone us, us landing someone on Mars, a person on Mars in terms of um. But yeah. should probably get around to uploading the uh, comic videos and everything. 99% of videos I upload on YouTube or you know, more, more accurately, 9 out of 10 videos I record never make it to YouTube. A lot of them got lost in hard drive crashes. A lot of them got, you know, just sitting on other hard drives that haven't been destroyed. But, yeah. So for this video, I had 10, some, maybe even 20 videos that I wanted to upload, including Thunderstorm videos, sorry James, um, that I never actually got around to uploading. Probably will upload the one that I recorded with a very interesting thunderstorm, and then probably, if you look really closely, there's probably an ISS pass in there because, because like, that's that's what happened. I was just out there looking for an ISS pass, and uh, I couldn't see it. And then there was a thunderstorm, and then I saw a dot. I'm like, is that the station? Is that the station? Bye, people. Turns the thing off. And then I use my little app and it's like, Yes, it's a station. And then I, then I started to, trying to put, like, my camera's uh, long exposure thing and I was fumbling too much. And But I did take a picture of it. It looks like a star, but still. <laughs> so much. I want to see the station via binoculars. But my dad would let me take the binoculars to college. I need to find it away. Today, while I'm here, tomorrow morning, in the early morning, there will be a pass. There will be a pass. I don't know if I'll be awake for that. But, could be magnitude. Negative 2.2-ish. And like, there's gonna also be a nice rhodium there around that time. But, and then, take my binoculars, and look at it. It's right here. I just, space. <laughs> I really love space. <laughs> How can I not love space? How can I not love space? <laughs> this is so exciting. Everything about space. <laughs> so Yes, space is awesome. But yes, I should probably get around to start cleaning my room. I think it was space. <laughs> and the fact that tomorrow I get to join officially the satellite design club. It's gonna be so cool. Game six. <laughs> so excited. There's no space. Just... NASA senpai notice me. <laughs> it is me like all the time. Anyways. Once this hits 30 minutes, half an hour mark, I'm gonna check up. Just waiting for that to happen. But, I need to think of a new term for you guys. Whatever. Thanks for watching, you know, I have no idea why you're watching, unless you like watching girls gush over space. Bye bye!